great idea about having us here is uh, that work ends up in people like me. And um, they, it's, uh, it's dramatic and it's, <clears throat> uh, thank you for all the work that goes into it, not just the moment of the treatment, um, but the, the forethought and the planning and the work that goes behind it, the training, um, thank you. I, I think the, the thing that amazed me the most through the whole process was just the amazing community um, that I experienced and that my family experienced. Um, we, saw it, we saw it here, we saw it at the hospital. Thanks to everybody here, many of you who helped us. Uh, we're so grateful to be here. I, it seems like a miracle that uh, a bad dream in some ways, but also a miracle that this whole thing has kind of happened. Okay, good morning and welcome everyone. We want to welcome all our clinical staff, our supportive administration, especially Latoya Selby from my office who helped us to put this together, our media affair, Jeff Jakomovitz, who was our right hand for the last two weeks in this event, and most of all, the people on my left here are survivors, families, and their first responders. The estimated number of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest OHCA in the United States is 300,000. The median reported survival to hospital discharge after out-of-hospital cardiac arrest with any first reported rhythm is only 7 point nine percent so there's about 92 percent you're not going to make it in 2002 two papers were published side by side in New England Journal of Medicine the reference at the bottom of this slide and they both demonstrated that use of therapeutic hypothermia after cardiac arrest decrease the mortality and improve neurological outcome based on this publication the International Laysan Committee on Resuscitation and the American Heart Association recommended the use of therapeutic hypothermia after cardiac arrest. I did not know what was happening to me. And my first, uh, the car I was in, the driver didn't know what was happening to me. However, uh, uh, calling the emergency uh, number of 911, uh, they s recommended, uh, or they sent, I don't know for sure what happened, but I ended up at St. Luke's which was very fortunate because they have a good, a very good cardiac department. Julian said, and I have heard, that um, the recovering patients really don't remember uh, what actually happened. In reviewing what I was going to say, I realized I don't remember what happened. It all happened so fast uh, and in some ways how fortunate we were. Within seconds the EMS came and said we're going to St. Luke. We did not meet Dr. Herzog until the next day but immediately from the time he got onto the ambulance work was started 
and how fortunate it, it seems like seconds um, from the time he passed out that work was started on him. But I'd like to tell you before I turn it over that his long-term memory is mind-boggling. It returned immediately. Therapeutic hypothermia is defined as controlled lowering of core body temperature to 32 degrees Celsius up to 34 degrees Celsius. And this temperature range represents the optimal balance between clinical effect and cardiovascular toxicity. And a young woman came up to us and said, do we know what happened? Unfortunately, Scott had collapsed silently on the, on the running path. And um, we turned around, and he was cyanotic um, and had a cut above his eye. So um, a, a biker had stopped, rolled him over as I had called 911. We had a difficult time pinpointing where exactly we were because we were in Riverside Park. So they had a really difficult time kind of sorting out where we might be. Um, Allison had the good wits about her to run to a call box that was just south of, um, of the bar at 105th, and they were able to kind of track us down. Um, in the interim, Scott had been then moved to his back, um, and we had started some CPR, doing some chest compressions, and, uh, and then Liam did some mouth-to-mouth. Um, just to kind of infuse some fresh air in there. And, uh, and then probably I would say in about five, ten minutes or so, the, the um, services arrived to continue CPR and whatnot. So they intubated him right away. Um, as soon as they told me, I stopped doing chest compressions. And uh, then they continued to work on him in the park for about 20 or 30 minutes or so. I don't remember any of that, for collapsing in Riverside Park, fortunately. so woke up here and people were putting tubes in me and, and well they were already in by then and they were it was out for about a, a week before I regained consciousness and looked around and they said oh explain the situation to me so despite considerable investment in the development and nationwide distribution of guidelines the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services Cooperative Cardiovascular Project reported the quality of care for Medicaid beneficiaries with acute myocardial infarction was far from optimal. Many subsequent studies have also shown similar disappointing adherence to the therapeutic recommended in published guidelines. To address this issue, the Advanced Cardiac Admission Program focusing on a critical pathways approach for risk stratification and medical management of patients admitted with acute coronary syndrome was launched at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital Center in New York. The ACAP was based on the hypothesis that simplified algorithmic approach in management of patients with cardiac disease as well as initiation and optimization of therapy according to established guidelines in the hospital setting would result in higher medications utilization both during hospitalization and long-term follow-up and higher achievement of standard goals. Implementation of this program involved the use of algorithm-based treatment pathways, standardized admission orders, patient's education, and follow-up of treatment and major adverse cardiac events. We believe that simplified risk stratification as well as prioritization and algorithmic treatment according to guidelines have the potential to significantly increase treatment, utilization, and improve the outcome of patients suffering from CAD. More information can be found at the following website. The therapy 
that the doctor has been explaining now today is that I know about that a little bit. It, it works wonderful because my concern in my life always is my mind and my voice because without any of this I cannot work. So I regain all my faculties and my memory and the voice and everything. We believe in the patient and family centered critical care unit um, and that we can provide quality in compassionate care and quality in communication to our patients, the patients who survive and the patients who don't survive. My dad has uh, advanced uh, heart failure. He was offered a ICD. He, you know, he considered it, uh, but because of this, uh, this other neurological uh, issues that he's having, he, he thought that maybe he didn't want it. You know, we we're fortunate. We we're fortunate to, to have um, uh, the great help of Dr. Herzog and Dr. Shapira, and, and some luck, and, and uh, uh, things things came out all right. He, and still. Uh, He's playing with his grandkids. It's still obviously a long way to go. This, this all happened very recently. He's still not ambulating. He's just starting to weight bear. Uh, he's eating. Um, and that, that's sort of where we're at.